So I'm sure you have been in a situation where somebody asks you on a date or somehow you're about to link. Let's hope not, ladies. Let's hope we are going on dates. Only no hangouts, no links, no let's get coffee unless it's a business meeting. But the butterflies before, the nervous feeling before, the urge to take five shots before for some people... It can be a lot. It can be very overwhelming, especially if you have been out of the game for a while or maybe you just went through a breakup and this is one of your or your first date back out there. I am here today to give you a little bit of guidance and help to get through, not even get through, but like enjoy that first date and help take away some of your nerves. I can confidently say that I don't really get nervous for first dates anymore and a lot of this has to do with my mindset shift. And if we're just going on a date or maybe you're new at dating or whatever, I think it's kind of natural to be nervous in the sense of are they gonna like me? How is this gonna go? What are they gonna think of me? And instead you have to kind of switch your thinking to Am I going to like them? What are they going to do to impress me? Especially if you're someone who dates men. Once you understand that the man should be trying to impress you, it takes a lot of the pressure off, you know, because, you know, we want to be funny, we want to be likable, we want to be this and that, but you really just need to be yourself, you need to look good, smell good, and have so much confidence in yourself that anybody who doesn't see that, it, it's a reflection on them and not you because you have such a strong faith and belief in yourself. I think most women can benefit from the advice of when it comes to relationships and dating, doing way less. I don't even mean to sound this in a way that's sexist or like an old man from the 1930s saying this, but like, a lot of women are talking way too much on dates. <laughs> and I just mean that in the sense of you don't need to be revealing so much to somebody that you don't know. A lot of women want to talk about their past, past boyfriends, their ex. They want to talk about their trauma. They want to talk about their attachment style with a man who, first of all, probably doesn't care. And then especially a man that you just met or that you are just getting to know. He hasn't deserved any of that information, so stop talking. This doesn't mean to have awkward silences or to be awkward or try to come across as boring, but it just means to do more with your eyes, your body language, and to ask more interesting, unique questions, like not job interview questions, but just to have genuine curiosity about the person that you're on the date with. A lot of flirting and seduction is done without speaking. And again, a lot of women just want to be so honest and like, I just want someone who's emotionally available and all this stuff. But it's literally just a true fact of life no matter who you're dealing with, whether it's a man, someone you're dating, anyone, any person, if you give too much away about yourself at first, it kind of comes across a lot of the times as like trauma dumping or like the person on the receiving end of that can feel like a deer in the headlights. You know, the headlights being your trauma that nobody asked for and that you shouldn't be telling someone you don't know just for your own good, you know? So I think a really good important rule of thumb for women is to always leave them the man wanting more. We want to accommodate. We want to be agreeable. We want to let someone know that we're interested, but you kind of have to just do the opposite of what you naturally want to do. <laughs> so if a man is like, let's take this to a second location. Why don't you come over? I'll make us drinks. No. First of all, a man trying to get you to come to his house in any circumstance, you know what he's trying to do. Even it could be the most wholesome thing. He could swear on his life to you and nothing's going to happen. But okay, then why do you want me to come over? You know? No. So always leave them wanting more. It's important that you're the one to initiate having to leave. You're the one to hang up the phone. You're the one to always pull back. And it's not about playing games or being avoidant or whatever therapy speak you want to use. It's just about leveling out the playing field. Because as women... You know, I think 
naturally for a lot of women we kind of overgive, but I think a lot of that also is kind of taught to us to, you know, put other people before ourselves, to make sure other people are comfortable. Well, I want to make sure that they know that I like them. I don't want to offend them by not going to their house. You know, like, no. And so by pulling back actively, by consciously pulling back, you're actually just leveling the playing field when it comes to dealing with a man. So keep that in mind and stop feeling bad. This girl on TikTok went on a whole rant about how this stylist in New York scammed her out of like two grand plus and she was like well I don't want to say his name because I felt bad it's like babe he already scammed you the damage has been done like why are you worried about his feelings but it's like I get it because that's kind of how we're taught you have to unlearn a lot of that consciously especially when it comes to a man that wants to sleep with you or that you know you're dating or that you're seeing because they literally rely on you feeling bad and being emotional, quote unquote, to get what they want. Shira Seven has this really great video. It's like a clip on TikTok where she's like, you want men to start talking about love? Start talking about money. And you'll see how quickly they're like, well, what about love? Can't relationships be about love anymore? Like, what about love? What about love? And they're trying to steer you back to thinking with your emotions and to making decisions based on emotion rather than logic. Because logically, when it comes to dealing with a man, you need to be looking at what he's doing for you, how he's tangibly improving your life. You cannot, you know, rely on love and like chit chat and like the words that he says and how good he makes you feel because all of that can be just taken away. It's words, it's fluff. Yeah, it might feel good, but so many women have their lives ruined over the belief in a fairy tale or the belief that someone is going to change, that a man is going to change, or that he really is going to come through. We're like, well, maybe this time. And you cannot invest emotionally or you can't invest anything. You can't invest time. You can't literally invest a single thing into a man until he has 1000% proven to you that he does what he says he's gonna do, that he's improving your life, and that he's someone you can rely on. And that's another thing too, I think a lot of women almost have too high expectations of a man. You know, we wanna believe in the fairy tale that we're sold, and so in every man that we maybe go on a date with, or that we meet, or that we have a crush on, we kind of expect them in an ideal world to fit this fantasy of the perfect guy who's gonna, you know, be a man, but also be in touch with his emotions. There's literally a meme about it. I think I talked about it before, but it's like a tweet or like a Facebook post, which I love the Facebook post memes. Those are like the best, like with the Facebook brand emojis. It's just like they hit different. But it's like girls these days want a guy that's from the hood, but plans picnics. And it's like all these contradicting traits. And that's really true, you know? And I think that's why it's very actually you know, it's kind of ironic that it's so easy, therefore, for a man to sell that dream, to sell that fairy tale, to sell that fantasy lie, because he can manipulate his words and make it seem like he could be the perfect guy at first. And that's where, like, love bombing comes into play and all of that. You know, my whole life, I've just been waiting for the perfect guy, like, maybe. And then it's like, oh my god, I think I found him. But then after two weeks, sometimes, you realize, like, oh, it was all a lie. It was all chit-chat. It was all just talk. It was, like... He secretly has a wife and eight other girlfriends and like a baby on the way, like all this stuff. <laughs> Stop living in the fairy tale. And it can be hard, you know, especially if you're attracted to someone and like the, you feel like the chemistry is there and it's like, well, this feels right. Like, what do you mean? But you have to, again, get out of your emotions, get out of your physical animalistic attraction. Think logically. How can this man improve my life? How or, you know, if it is someone you're dating or with, how is this man improving my life? What am I gaining from this? Where will I be in five or ten years if I continue to be with this person? These are all the things you have to ask yourself.